government or corporate or military policies and practices, the ability for any one of us to express dissent is being absolutely crushed by the federal st and state government under the guise of homeland security and other laws. Dissent is not terrorism. Let me repeat that. Dissent is not terrorism. Try. Occupy Eureka, through much of its 92 days of nonviolent protest in front of the Humboldt County Courthouse, has been under attack, and we have uncovered the dishonest, unlawful, outrageous premise for this campaign of intimidation and wrongful arrests, massive theft, civil rights violations, and media smear. Truth. The attempt of the district attorney to paint nonviolent protest as something sinister, to equate peaceful assembly with truck bombings, is slanderous. We are demanding a formal apology from Mr. Gallegos to all the participants of Occupy Eureka, and that this spate of spurious charges against the occupiers be dismissed immediately. Yeah. Yeah. We will not allow public officials paid with our tax dollars to smear patriotic Americans trying to fix the problems facing this nation. Yeah, the police wandered through our protest at will with no regard to people's personal privacy or their rights. So the claim that they didn't know what was going on in the area of the protest is laughable. Creating a climate of fear, the same tactics used by the corrupt in power to start an illegal war and steal billions in no-bid contracts from Homeland Security are now being used in an attempt to stifle peaceful dissent. The government cheers it in Egypt, they bomb for it in Libya, but they imprison it here in America. This cannot be tolerated if we are going to hold any pretense to being a free society. When the Tea Party brought their guns to the demonstrations, they were applauded. We bring tents and are beaten. Have we become so craven as a country that merely wishing to speak makes you dangerous in the minds of government officials? Mubaina uh, and Rob, as uh, members of Occupy Eureka, are also uh, participants in the uh, Redwood Curtain Cop Watch, and they have prepared a statement they'd like to read to you. Thank you. Really this is an open letter to Humboldt County District Attorney Paul Gallegos from Redwood Curtain Cop Watch. We have reviewed your November 2nd, 2011 email to the Humboldt County Sheriff, County Council, and County Administrative Officer, in which you direct that the tents of Occupy Eureka be removed from the front of the Humboldt County Courthouse. The Go Get em email, obtained through a California Public Records request, instigated with no legal basis the November 7 militarized raid, arrest, and civil rights violations by the Eureka Police Department and the Humboldt County Sheriff's Department, and presumably instigated the subsequent raids, arrests, and civil rights violations, and creates a conflict as you attempt to prosecute people arrested in those raids and related police actions. Most egregious, however, is that your email to the county is a malicious work of shock and awe deceit that should be retracted immediately. You wrote of Occupy Eureka protesters as if they might be terrorists with explosives in their tents. Redwood Curtain Cop Watch is outraged and disgusted at your dangerous, wholly unfounded, and secret implications regarding nonviolent Occupy Eureka protesters. Undoubtedly, thousands of people who will learn of your disingenuous and inflammatory November 2nd email and the subsequent similar emails will also be appalled and offended by your actions. You are the district attorney in a county that painfully remembers the bombing of nonviolent Earth First activists and organizers Judy Berry and Daryl Cherney, and the government's baseless attempt to depict these victims of horrendous violence and their fellow activists as terrorists in order to destroy their movement. Congress and Obama have just passed a bill allowing for indefinite military detention of anyone the government chooses to deem a possible terrorist. Having endured McCarthyism in the 1950s, 
still experiencing the effects and injustices of COINTELPRO suffering Iraq to preemptive attacks and years of war based on suspected weapons of mass destruction. We are in the age of post 9-11 USA Patriot Act, Arizona Senate Bill 1070, Islamophobia, the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act, and other atrocious affronts to due process, democracy, and humanity. You conjured up, this is a letter to the District Attorney Paul Gallegos, you conjured up a basis for the ongoing conspiracy to violate Occupy Eureka protesters' civil rights, relying on a similar rationale to that which produced the above-mentioned bigoted and repressive campaigns. Your November 2nd email and subsequent nefarious emails wherein you speak of security concerns regarding Occupy Eureka has now earned you a place with other government officials and propagandists who strip people of their fundamental right to fairness and use spurious allegations and labels such as terrorists to suppress dissent. The war on terror is based on manufactured fear of a nebulous idea. When Americans are fearful, they allow their military to invade countries illegally and immorally and are willing to surrender their civil liberties. Your rationale for invading tents and possibly cars and homes regarding potential explosives is the same war on terror based on creating fear. That's right. The paranoid directive you gave police regarding Occupy Eureka has led them to treat backpacks, blankets, anything that is under a tarp or a table as illegal or suspect, and they steal and even destroy that property. You claim, you claim in your November 2nd email that you are, quote, not aware of who occupies those tents. And you imply that such a fact is ground for legal suspicion, which it is not. It is also unbelievable that you are not aware, being that Occupy Eureka demonstrators have been living in the public view. Your November 2nd email degenerates to a record low when you put forward the most ludicrous, offensive, and incendiary statement. Quote, while I do not suspect that any of those tents contain any explosive or otherwise dangerous materials, I cannot confirm that they do not, and I do not believe that we can allow the risk of such an occurrence to continue. What occurrence? Are you asserting, asserting that your duty includes creating fear and suspicion upon which to predicate preemptive raids and arrests? Are or were your orders and unlawful accusations what have already been used locally as the premise for a long list of wrongs perpetrated by the Eureka police and the Humboldt sheriffs against Occupy Eureka, and they have the potential to ruin people's lives forever. Why'd you lie to the public, claiming that Occupy Eureka gets raided because of broken camping laws and municipal codes? There's nothing in your emails that allude to the illegality of the tents. Nothing requesting enforcement of the so-called crime of displaying signs and banners. Nothing that gives officers a legal basis for mass arrest or clearing all protesters from the sidewalks and lawn near the courthouse. Nothing that instructs officers to arrest people filming their activity. And nothing that alleges Occupy Eureka demonstrators were harming any property, government business, or other people. In fact, Paul Gallegos, Paul Gallegos specifically states that he does not believe Occupy Eureka demonstrators are harming property or government business or other people. Nevertheless, back to the letter, the officers have consistently pretended that all of those things are the reasons for their unlawful actions, and you have told the media the same. You remind the recipients of your November 2nd email that, quote, the courthouse is, in effect, the seat of all Humboldt County government. I thought it is the seat of all Humboldt County government. And that is the primary reason why Occupy Eureka is located in front of the courthouse. You defame the character of people engaged in constitutional activity with preposterous suggestion of explosives.
In mid-November, you acknowledged in a message to County Supervisor Mark Lovelace that the Occupy movement has been somewhat co-opted locally by our professional protesters. Putting aside the absurdity of such a statement, we do understand the implication that you recognize some of the nonviolent protesters and that you believe they are experienced and know what they're doing. However, you repeatedly suggest that all you need is one McVeigh guy and the whole seat of government is gone. How dare you correlate such an inflammatory idea with Occupy Eureka? How dare you create such a false and secretive premise and then tell the public that the police, through their illegal activities, are protecting the community and the safety of the, quote, 300 employees and 300 jail inmates? For shame. You have protected no one. We understand now that you used menacing and inflammatory what-ifs to prompt officers to raid Occupy Eureka and riot gear with semi-automatic weapons, to interfere day and night with every form of First Amendment expression, to, expo to oppose release from jail for protesters held on non-violent misdemeanor charges, and to order warrants and arrests that have no legal grounds. Perhaps you've forgotten that the people still have basic legal still have basic legal protections including the presumption of innocence, the right to be free from unlawful search and seizure, the requirement of probable cause before arrest, and the right to due process. These rights and others have been completely disregarded beginning on November 7th when Eureka Police began its raids, wrongful arrests, and unrelenting theft from Occupy Eureka. If the reason for the raids and daily harassment began with suspicion of explosives, the police should have had a search warrant, some kind of legal investigation. But you know, and so do the Eureka Police and Humboldt County Sheriffs, that there was never a threat of explosives at Occupy Eureka. It is incredulous that you are worried about one McVeigh guy who doesn't even have to be from here. If you are acting on a concern that anyone from anywhere could come and harm everyone in the courthouse jail building, perhaps you are too paranoid and delusional to hold an office. Invoking a tragic incident with many victims that occurred in another state over 15 years ago does not give you the legal grounds to create more victims by violating the rights of people peaceably assembling and redressing grievances. In addition to laying the groundwork for a string of civil rights violations against Occupy Eureka participants and anyone who happens to be in front of the courthouse when the police decide to handcuff, steal, and intimidate, your dangerous and unlawful framing of Occupy Eureka protesters as potential terrorists resulted in Eureka police officer Louis Altick telling protesters recently that he wanted to search a bag because it, quote, it may have a bomb in it. People refused, people refused to consent. Altick did not get a warrant. He did not search the bag. The bag continued to hold clothes and toiletries for its owner. If there was a legitimate suspicion that the bag contained a bomb, it would have been criminally negligent for Altic to not search the bag. The fact that he did not only proves that he never had a legitimate suspicion and used a baseless accusation as a flimsy pretext for harassment. This dishonest behavior in dealing with the Occupy protest seems to be standard operating procedure not only for EPD but for the Office of the District Attorney as well. Stop deceiving the public and stop targeting the Eureka Occupy protest. Yeah. Yeah. You have not only defied the law at the expense of many people's civil liberties, property, and well-being, but you are wiping out any remaining trust from the progressive community that put you in office. Your terrorist rhetoric has no place here. Sincerely, Edward Curtin Copwatch. Thank you, Robin, for being um, I'd like to make everyone aware that tonight we're having our uh, General Assembly for the Humboldt County, uh, and that'll be at 6 o'clock at the Labor Temple. Uh, 
Uh, we have some packets of information available for folks uh, to hand out that, that contains uh, some of the details and, and some of the letters. Also a contact number if anyone is interested in, in more detailed information. It's on the left, 9th and E. 840 E. Yeah, so we, so we do have some press packets. Uh, Roger Parcel also has some information that would be of interest to any legitimate uh, media that's here and also to the public. Uh, so I would, I would stop by and see him and, and pick up one of those packets. Uh, if there are any questions from the, from the folks here, uh, we would be glad to answer them.
it has come to our attention that the Humboldt County District Attorney is indulging in paranoid speculation. In an email with the subject line, tents outside the courthouse, the DA raises the possibility of a sinister threat to the county government followed by tents on the lawn. dangerous materials and tents. He states, nor are we aware of who occupies those tents. He clearly states several times that he has absolutely no basis for these suspicions and, and I quote, I do not believe that any individual out there intends to do any harm to this county government, county property, or any individual. We are still waiting for the county to produce any other email that is that his must that must have generated, as well as the details of any meetings that this speculatory fear must have generated. Initiate, initiating the arrest of 15 people and their confiscation of their property based on something that he clearly knows to be false has opened the taxpayers knows to be false has opened the taxpayers of this jurisdiction to costly civil actions as well as possible criminal pen, criminal criminal penalties. He is fully aware that this is a nonviolent movement. The facilities hot manager and the police really move above the, the occupation without interference by the protesters. He was invited to visit the occupation in the 10 hour open to the public general assemblies to see that those occupying the tents were peaceful protesters, including members of the homeless community that have been struggling for basic human rights yes. with this county for years. Yes. We conduct ourselves in a transparent system for any person to see and participate. <clears throat> he asks that tents be removed as soon as possible while citing no ordinance being violated and no basis for this for his reckless speculation he put into motion. A police raid that occupied occurred on the 7th of November were no facts and he states clearly that he has no reasonable basis for his suspicion. There have been no violent acts at any of the occupations except those committed by the police and he attempted and any attempt to conflate nonviolent political protests with terrorism is an effort of to democracy. His department is an affront to democracy. We are therefore demanding that the district attorney publicly repudiate this wild speculation and tell the public that the real reason for the continued harassment of the Occupy movement the real reason. Let me on that a minute, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no. Thank you very much. One minute, please. No. Well, this is freedom of speech. I got to see a felony. Uh, thank you, James. Uh, to answer Roger's question, the tents are being held by the Eureka Police Department. So that's where the tents are. Why? Um, a truckload? Well, actually, three truckloads. Can Why? Canopies. All that? Blankets, banners, 200 plus signs and banners. Oh, no. e evidently, they are evidence of camping. They, well, they're about one of the well, I'd like to, to thank you all for coming. Please remember, we have some information packets for folks. Uh, Roger has some more information. Uh, we have some handouts on the table talking about what we're doing. And uh, company is always appreciated here, especially in the middle of the night. We are still occupying 24-7, despite the police harassment. Yeah! yeah. 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 Spread the word about the